Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Mind Your Exam. So in this video, we will be studying about one of the framing techniques that is used by the data link layer to convert a bit stream that it receives into frames. Okay, so uh, framing seems very easy that the data link layer converts the bits into frames, but it is actually very difficult because the, there should be a mechanism that helps the data link layer at the receiver side to know what is the starting and ending of a frame and it should be able to distinguish different frames from each other and also once the data link layer at the receiver end knows where a frame is starting and where it is ending then it will be able to check the contents of that frame whether they are correctly received or not or whether they are transmission errors okay so framing is a very important part of the data link layer functionality and there are four different ways in which framing can be performed the first technique we'll be studying today and in the remaining three videos that follow this video you'll be able to learn about the other three framing techniques so before starting let us see a definition of what is actually framing framing is the conversion of the raw bit stream which is given by the physical layer to the data link layer into frames okay so construction of frames at the data link layer which is present at the sender side is actually known as framing so that the data link layer can uh, transmit it and it the frames are currently are uh, correctly understood or recognized by the dll present at the destination okay now let us see the first technique of framing which is byte count so what actually happens in this is the goal of uh, the byte count technique is to know where the end of the current frame is and where the next frame starts okay so to know the end of the current frame and the starting of the next frame so once we know that where the current frame is ending and we know the uh, following bits will be the starting of the next frame so we'll be able to identify and segregate different frames from each other so this is the goal that every framing technique wants to achieve now how does byte count achieves this so byte count basically reserves one field in the header part of the frame and this particular field tells how many number of bytes are present in the frame so this byte count technique will keep a specific field in the header part of the frame and that particular field will tell you the number of bytes that are actually present in the frame including the header part also so this is a very important point that this total number includes this particular header field also okay so the data link layer that is present at the destination sees the count that is present in this particular field and this particular field tells you the number of bytes so this is also an important point it is not bits it is bytes one byte is equal to eight bits so this particular field will tell you the number of bytes that are present in the frame and the data link layer at the destination will see this count and find out the end of the frame okay so for example this is the transmission that is received at the data link layer at the receiver end okay so what it does is see I told you that one particular field in the header part of the frame header part is present in the beginning so before the data starts in a frame the header part is present so this is one frame and now this frame consists of a header part in the header part there is one field which is the byte count field this field contains a value which is 5 in this case and here this 5 basically means that this entire frame consists of 5 bytes including this particular field okay so the total length of the frame is 5 bytes so now when the destination data link layer sees this particular uh, frame it will check the first field 
here the first field is denoting the byte count so 5 value means that apart from this particular field 4 more bytes are expected in this particular frame then when 4 bytes end the second frame will start okay now for the second frame also the first byte in the second frame will tell you the number of bytes that are present in this frame so here also the 5 value tells you that total 5 bytes are present in frame 2 also and once these 5 bytes end this is the end of the second frame then come begins the third frame but we do not know how long it is unless we have read the uh, this particular field the byte count field in the header so it shows the value 8 that means total 8 bytes which is 1 2 3 4 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, the third frame ends here. So, these values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 these are some random values that I have written which denote the data part of this particular frame and the first values of each frame basically denote the uh, byte count okay so this is the ending of the third frame and this is the beginning of the fourth frame now in the beginning the first value tells you how many more bytes are to follow so total three bytes so uh, this is the fourth frame now one big problem with this particular uh, framing technique is byte count can get garbled that means if the transmission is not error free then this particular value which is actually telling you how many bytes a frame contains if this particular value gets changed there occurs some error in this value then you will lose track of this particular frame whose byte count has been garbled and you will also lose track of the further frames i'll tell you how so let us assume that this was the transmission this was the bit the series of values that should have been received by the receiver but actually there was some error during transmission and this particular uh, uh, sequence was actually received so what happens is the first value is correct it was 5 at the sender side also it is 5 here also so this is frame 1 it is correctly understood by the receiving data link layer now this particular value has been changed during transmission so there is an error in this particular value and this value was denoting the byte count for the second frame it should have been 5 but it is 7 now so that means the data link layer at the receiver end will understand and think that the second frame consists of a total of 7 bytes so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and it will think that this entire is frame 2 then since frame 2 is ending here it will think the next byte shows the number of bytes present in the third frame and it will again misinterpret all the remaining data so in the case of byte count framing technique once an error occurs there is no way that the receiving data link layer can get back to the right track again because there is no way of telling that even if one frame was incorrectly received what is the starting of the next frame okay so this is the biggest drawback of this technique and in the next video we will understand the second technique which will overcome this drawback okay so i hope you have understood this topic thank you for watching this video and let us know which other topics in computer networks and data communications you would like to study from our channel thank you for watching till we meet in the next video mind your exam